Hi there everybody, this is Patrick Nickel with Crash Games and just here to provide you with a tutorial video for our upcoming release, Council of Verona. Uh, you're going to see sort of a, of a in-play setup already here, but I'm going to take you through uh, three parts in this video. You have the initial setup of the game, uh, how the game works, and how everything is resolved at the end here. So um, really quickly, there's a couple different setups in the game. If you have three or four players, you're going to use only the 0, 3, and 5 influence tokens. And as you can see, these are double-sided. So when you place an influence token onto an agenda card, you place it face down uh, so that no one can see what, what your number is there. So if you're playing a 3 or 4 player game, you only use the 3 and the 5. Um, if you're playing a 2 player game, you go ahead and you add in a, a fourth token so that each player uh, would have four. Otherwise, you're just down to the zero, the three, and the five. So you keep those in front of you uh, face down, and that way nobody knows kind of what you're doing. So in a two-player game, the setup is going to go like this. You're going to immediately take three decks off the top, or three cards rather, off the top of the deck. And I have two decks out here just to make things a little bit easier to explain. Then you're going to deal each of the two players uh, five cards, and from those five cards, they're going to choose three of the cards and then pass two. So they may look through the deck here and go, okay, well, I have Juliet, and that's kind of a powerful card, and Mercutio. It's always advised that you keep at least one agenda card in your hand. And the agenda cards, not only do they say agenda, but they're going to be really easy to spot because they have places to place influence tokens. So you may decide you want to keep her, Lord Montague, and uh, Count Paris, and then pass the other two. That player is going to do the same, and then you're going to have your starting hand of five cards in a two-player game. In a three-player game, uh, what you do is you have all 13 cards, and I guess I should have started out in the beginning and said every game of uh, Council of Verona comes with 13 cards, and 16 influence tokens. And so in a three or four player game, you're gonna take the deck of cards, you're going to deal, we'll say this is a three player game, every player one card face down, then starting with the first player, you're going to have a draft. So at that point, you just hand the deck to the first player, they'll choose one, they'll pass it to the second, they'll choose one. And this goes all around and around until there's two cards left for that last player, they're going to choose one and they're going to set the other out of the game. So that's important to kind of keep your eyes on what's happening there for what, what's going to be out of the game. So that's the setup for a three or four player game. So in a three player game, you're going to end up with four cards each. And in a four player game, you're going to end up with three cards each. So that's the general setup here. Now, as far as setting up the, the council and the exile, this happens as the game game happens and the game plays on. So here you're going to see this is the council and the exile is off to the side. So on a player's turn they can play a card either to the council or cast them into exile and they can choose to play an influence token. So this is sort of the gameplay portion of the tutorial video now. We're transitioning from the setup into the gameplay. Um, these are going to be face down. You can look at them. A player can always look at their tokens, even if they're out here on the board. If you forget what you put out onto a card, you can pick that up and look at it. Obviously, be careful not to show your opponents. Uh, Council of Verona does not have a memory element in it, so you do not have to memorize where you place your tokens. You're always able to look at what you've placed. So some of the things that, that people ask me when, when we play this or when we have shared the prototype with some is, why is there a zero? The zero is a great bluffing token. Let's say that I were to add Romeo to the council, and I'm not, I don't have Juliet in my hand, because that's Romeo's agenda, if Romeo and Juliet are together. And so I have the zero here. Maybe I want people to think that I want Romeo to score, and maybe I don't. So I may throw my zero up here on the top. You'll notice there are some modifiers to each card, and this gives me a great opportunity to segue into the anatomy of the cards. So a card is either an agenda or an ability card. 
and Romeo and Nurse are two great examples. So on an agenda card, you're always going to have three different places where players can place their influence tokens. It's very important to remember that nobody owns the agenda cards. You simply play them either onto the council or into exile, and all players are available to place influence tokens out. So when you place an agenda card at any point in the game, you can place it if there's a spot available. And you'll notice that there's modifiers next to these. So these will modify the score if the agenda card scores at the end of the game, which leads me to the text down below. You'll see there's an M and it's in blue, and that represents that Romeo is a Montague, and then his agenda is below. So Romeo's specific agenda is if Romeo and Juliet are together. They could be together on the council, they could be together in exile, wherever they end up, they need to be together in order to score. Otherwise, any influence tokens on that card, if that condition is not met, is not scored for the game. The ability cards always have a special ability that those cards can make, uh, can do rather, when they're played. And it's important to know that this is optional. When you play a card from your hand, it is optional to place an influence token onto it or it is optional to take the action. The nurse, which is actually a, a unique card that I want to tell you about, is some of the cards are both members of a house and neutral at the same time. And this is really important because they will count as both. For example, Princess Galeas is an agenda card that if there's an equal number of Montagues or Capulets on the council, or at least four neutral on the council is his agenda. So the nurse, if we were calculating whether Princess Galeas would score or not, the nurse will count both as a neutral and as a Capulet. And that's a very important part to remember. There are some cards in the game as well, like Friar Lawrence, who he is also a neutral and a Montague. So those cards are important to know that they count, they count as both. Now when you play the nurse to either the council or the exile, you have the ability to move one character from the exile to council. So this would be a great card, let's say if somebody that wanted Romeo to score, and let's say that Juliet was here in exile, you could then play that card drag Juliet into the council, and now things have changed. So things can change right up to the last minute in Council of Verona, and they, they tend to change quite a bit. So that's one of the fun parts, is you never quite know to the end, and this is really where the bluffing and the deduction comes in. Because if it was the very first card of the game, you know, and let's pretend that somebody had Juliet in their hand, and they wanted to play it, you know, right out of the gate. You play Juliet. Well, you're tipping off a lot about what you're doing here and based on what, what you choose to do. So if you play Juliet, it may be, it'd be pretty difficult for someone to determine whether you had Romeo in your hand or not. But what you do, whether you choose to place an influence token or not on Juliet, can be important. If you choose to place an influ not place an influence token, on Juliet, someone may assume you don't expect Juliet to score, but maybe you can throw them off your trail by placing the zero down there, because then you have nothing, nothing vested in it. Or maybe you just want to wait and see how things shake out. So that's a brief tutorial overview um, of Council of Verona. Uh, if there's anything that I missed or there's any questions you have, please feel free to add those uh, to the comment section in the page. Or you can always uh, find Crash Games on Twitter at Crash underscore Games or on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Crash Games. Thank you so much for checking out Council of Verona, and we hope to earn your support.